reviews, discussions, and theories about films and horror, sci-fi, and genre. This is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. What's up, everybody? It's The Hardy Construction. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, but most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. Hit that thumbs up. Let people know that you listen to the show with your host, Comp. And today's film is Werewolf by Night 2022. Follows a lycanthrope superhero who fights evil using the abilities given to him by a curse brought on by his bloodline. Directed by Michael Giacchino. Written by Heather Quinn, Peter Cameron, Jerry Conway, who did the original comic book. Starring Laura Donnelly, Harriet Sansom Tarras, Kirk R. Thatcher, and obviously Gail Garcia Bernal. So, how did I get to know about Werewolf Night? Well, it's obviously part of the MCU, which is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And for the most part, it's enjoyable. It's a bit repetitive. I'm. They wanted to make Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness be the first Marvel horror film, which I guess it is to a point for me it really wasn't I didn't really find that movie that great a lot of people loved Danny li- liked it a lot I thought probably the only enjoyable sequence for me in that film was the montage sequence but other than that I was not I was kind of let down I think that uh, I haven't really enjoyed a film since maybe the second half of Spider-Man No Way Home and obviously, I think Hawkeye was something that I really enjoyed. But pretty much everything has kind of become necessary to watch to get to the next part. And this, like a lot of people have been saying, is that this latest effort or this this version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is, I guess, Phase 4, has not really been sort of aiming towards anything. I understand that Kang is going to be the big evil of the whole universe because of what was introduced in the Loki series. But uh, And that might be pieces of it might be in this werewolf by night special presentation which runs about 50 50 to 52 minutes but i'm going and watching this without any real knowledge of the original comic book i i was aware of the comic book i know they had a tomb of dracula they had werewolf by night i don't know if they had some sort of mummy or whatever else kind of comic books they did which were their horror arms so this is technically like a legit first horror supernatural piece and marvel released it in october and I was very pleasantly surprised by it. It's like there's a, and I don't mean to soften up the emphasis of how this movie is, but it's very wholesome. And I don't know how I can say that, but it's wholesome because there's an introduction of Man Thing, and Man Thing is a character that gets confused a lot with Swamp Thing, and Swamp Thing is more of like a cerebral, well, based on the works by Alan Moore, who did the comic book in DC. I believe Man Thing was actually here before. Swamp Thing, I, I apologize if I got that wrong, but um, Man Thing is this creature who actually, there was an actual like Marvel horror movie back then, this is when Marvel was really in the toilet and they had to sell off all their rights, and there was actually a Man Thing feature way back in the past, so that's like a really obscure Marvel film, but this Man Thing is actually cute and cuddly, the film is done in black and white, and it's done in this very noir style. Or, or like, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s type of horror film location. And, you know, just beautiful settings. Michael Giacchino really has an eye. And he really borrowed from the old 60s through 70s type of horror uh, framing techniques and stuff like that. There's actually some, there's a really cool giallo shot with a close-up of Gail Garcia Bernard's eyes. And uh, it was awesome. And it's funny, this is like the second werewolf film that has a latino lead that i've seen the first one was a movie that i actually walked out on which was the the um uh what was it called the werewolf no yeah i guess it's called the werewolf right something like that i don't know what the hell it was but it was it was starring uh benicio del toro and boy i I was really let down by that movie it was actually by one of the directors of the first captain america film the first avenger and some beans and rellena de papa and all that stuff but anyway, I, I wasn't into it. But now there's a second Latino character who's playing a werewolf in this movie. And uh, Gael Garcia Bernal, I've seen him in plenty of films. I, I've i really enjoyed his work. He's one of those actors that is always in... He chooses really interesting projects, and he's always in, in great movies. And um, I, I can't say enough about how... Marvel has casted some really great actors for these movies. It's it's like weird that they'll put some great actors to good use and then sometimes they just won't. Like I saw Thor Love and Thunder, which was a letdown. Actually, it was such a letdown that even Taika Waititi has left 
doing Marvel films because he doesn't want to screw up his bag, so to speak. And that had Christian Bale, and Christian Bale was fantastic in that movie, and a complete waste in that in that role. I would have just loved to see an old movie with just Christian Bale versus Thor. You know what I mean? There's versus uh, uh, Chris Hemworth, Hemsworth, but they had to shove in Jane Foster and all this other horse shit, and it was so whack. And I, I, that was that's just my opinion of it. But they really know tend to waste characters. And in this one, this is a short, very short special presentation. It almost feels like it's like a soft opening for supernatural titles and the in the not supernatural because obviously Moon Knight I believe has to deal with like Egyptian gods and stuff but this is like the the horror supernatural type of area and they got away with a lot of it in the gore in this because there is it is a bit gory it's not super gory because it's black and white which is pulling the Tarantino Kill Bill part 1 sort of thing where he had to reduce an NC17 rating because of all the gore during the uh, 88, uh, I forget what they're called, whatever, the, the guys with the domino masks, there was so much gore and blood and violence in it that they had to turn it black and white, and so you can't see the red of blood, then that means, you know, people will be able to stomach it, so that's basically what I know whether it is, they don't know how to perfect that, there has to be somebody that knows how to do black and white CGI in a film, but apparently I don't know what's going on with Marvel. But uh, it looked it looked great. Um, he looks great. His design is great. The the CGI the the black and white CGI is not so good. But in color, he looks great. So there's also a character called Elsa Bloodstone, who is um, the co lead in this film. She's played uh, by Laura Donnelly. I've heard of the name before. I don't know who the character is or how she's supposed to be a badass. But in this one, she's she has that like 1950s strong woman lead type of character, and I actually liked her in the role. I thought she was cool. She kicked ass. Um, when she plays a great fright, she plays great frightened, like a great frightened character. Because there's a scene between her when she's inside the cage. I'm sure if you've seen the trailer, when she's watching uh, this guy turn into the Wolfman, it's like crazy. It's like, it looks she her acting is so good in this. A uh, real standout in this is Harriet Sansom Harris. Um, she's playing uh, Jew Ver, uh, Verusa who was actually the stepmother to Elsa, and she was married to Elsa's father. And it was funny, because there was a part in the trailer where there's like a corpse talking, and it looks really bad, and I was like, oh my god, because I thought, like, can't they make like a... I didn't know the context of the character. I was like, why is this dead guy moving like an actual puppet? It looks horrible. But it's explained in the film, and it's actually quite funny. Um, so, in this world... Uh, by the way, just getting back to Harriet Sansom Harris, uh, who's playing Verusa, she's just a badass. Like, she's a great villain. Like, we don't get a lot of time with her it's this isn't like a two-hour film this is like if they cut out all the best parts of a good like marvel action film and they just cut out all the horse shit and they just left all the best parts of the movie so this is like it, i really was impressed by this film but uh she is such a good bad guy in this she's over the top she's so like fun and she's like chewing up the scenery she's great so everybody's like dialed up to 20 in this movie um, there's also Daniel J. Watts as Barrasso, Kirk R. Thatcher as Jovan, uh, Leonardo Nam as Leorn. I'm trying to think of who the female um, hunter is. There's a female hunter. Uh, Eugenie Bourdurant. Um, the, there's like four hunters as well. Because I think Werewolf at Night always gets paired up with Blade and Moon Knight. And they used Blade's name, voice in The Eternals, which I thought was an okay film. I thought it was better than I, a lot of people ex thought. Uh, or they didn't think it was that good. But, uh, yeah, so there's all these hunters, and there's all this, it's just badass fighting, and then Werewolf is, when the werewolf, like, comes out, I wish it was a little bit more, he does lean more towards, like, a 50s sort of werewolf kind of design, uh, Galgar's, uh, his character's Jack, yes, and there's no sweeping cameras, and there's no giant dolly work, it's sort of very, in some parts it's pretty pedestrian, but I think when it's all chopped together, it looks really good, there's, there were some cool scenes I noted where there was like a camera hovering over a cage that was holding Jack and Elsa. That's a great shot. Um, good, uh, good uh, transition scenes, stuff like that. But it's nothing to like write home about. But I thought it was like for what it was. I thought it was such an interesting and well done, you know, different sort of film by Marvel by their standards. And it was a hell of a lot more entertaining because it was cut right to the point. It was 54 minutes. Nothing was dragged out. Um, like it's like I've only seen the first two episodes of She-Hulk, and I'm like, it's fine, it's all right, and I'll watch the rest of it because I have a, an attraction to large green women. So I will watch that before I watch like Moon Knight or Miss uh, Marvel. But um, you know, this was great. This was fun. It's short. 
it gets right to the point it's entertainment it's black and white it's it's it was much more entertaining than most of these superhero movies that sort of paint by numbers like say like a captain marvel was sort of boring eternals had a little piece of boring stuff in it like i was i'm more of a captain america like civil war and uh, winter soldier and hawkeye like i like that stuff which is a little bit grounded in more reality um i guess as as real as it can get um hawkeye and, um sorry captain america and the winter soldier show like that i love that stuff the rest of the stuff is like i don't know I, i'm fine with it but they need to be you know better with that material and and for this one being such an over-the-top premise i really enjoyed it and i urge you to watch it even if you don't know anything about the comic book it's not trapped within the marvel mcu where you don't ha you have to watch 100 million things to watch this you can just watch this by itself and it's super fun and it would be great to just have a supernatural marvel you know wing just by itself so you don't have to worry about anything else because if they have to turn something black and white to hide the gore i'm like oh boy what are they gonna do with blade what are they gonna do with this and that and they're gonna turn it all pg-13 which is like they're, they got to be safe because they want money and that's the that's the bottom line but for this for right now and how it was and how it was handled is fantastic so i totally recommend watching this film if even if you've never seen anything mcu this is a solid little horror film that's totally wholesome super gory for black and white and it was cool so with that i give this movie a 7 out of 10 turning into a wolfman but still loving the ladies and with that this has been the hard deconstruction thank you for listening